But uh, Abani Ghani, everyone, this is Professor Amin Ra, uh, Professor Emeritus, California State University of Long Beach, Africana Studies Department, former city councilman for the city of Compton, former Compton College Board of Trustees, and former Compton Unified School District Board of Trustees. We want to, along with my co-host, historian Joe Hembrick, longtime educator for Linwood and Compton Unit, educator, both in administration and counseling and teaching, and the first black head football coach for Linwood Unified School District <clears throat> High School. And we just want to welcome you here to the um, uh, Conscious Corner, where we have a very, very, very unique guest who has lived in Cuba for over 25 years and who is a longtime friend of mine, but as well as he attended Cal State Long Beach and where he majored in history and African, African uh, Black studies at that time, now Africana studies. But he's a lecturer, a author, author of Black Truth. His first publication, his second publication was uh, Black Revelations, and his third publication was Conspiracy of Silence. And he's here um, uh, in Florida right now, and he's going to make a presentation. And we want to thank all of you that have chimed in, because this is going to be a very distinguished uh, 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 a presentation that deals with the letters that make up English words and where that sound came from. We're going to start with uh, the history and uh, 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 or origin and history of the letter M, and we're going to get right into it. And we're going to let uh, 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 Sar Jabal, author, historian, as well as activist, as well as uh, 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 a distinguished educator, uh, to, uh, to to make his presentation. Thank you for ch chiming in. Oh, we got Brother uh, Sister Linda Shorter from Florida, Brother uh, uh, Machinda from Louisiana, Brother Rasha Key, the host of all of, of both platforms, CEN at Network, Education Network, which comes on tomorrow, and uh, Conscious Corner, which he sponsors also on his platform. So we want to thank Brother Rasha Key. Hey, brother, I saw you. It's on you. Go ahead. Hey. <laughs> Hello, everybody, again. Yeah. <laughs> I've been uh, very busy in the last few weeks um, revisiting a, uh, a hieroglyphic symbol, which was uh, <clears throat> represents a letter M, and which uh, I first talked about 30-some years ago in... Uh, uh, the Black Truth. And I, I want to show you just briefly this. This is the letter N, and it's taken from this symbol up top, which is the surface of water. So literally, it means water. Okay, so that, that would be the focus of what I want to talk about this evening because um, I found that it. Uh, has much more meaning than just water and it has to be put into context and is actually as we're going to show you uh, the uh, origin for five different letters in the alphabet as well uh, especially if go back to this thing we can see that uh, the, the letter n comes from this particular hieroglyph, the first three strokes of this hieroglyph. And um, since it, it's a picture of water, then it, of course that's what its meaning is. It also means the possessive, so that um, everything is was considered um, uh, a part of water or contained in water. That is the whole celestial world or universe was contained in water. And so it, it because of that, everything is, belongs to water, comes from water, the letter N came to represent the, um, uh, the possessive. Uh, you find that, for example, if you're from Africa, you say you're African, you add the N at the end. 
or if you're from America, you're American, or et cetera, et cetera. And even for inanimate things, that's what the meaning was. But um, further, we have the first three strokes which make up the symbol, which uh, when you look at them individually, you have one that's like a peak, and then you have one that's like a valley. And both of these were instrumental in understanding the glyphs that the, uh, that the Europeans misrepresented or misread. Um, when the, uh, the, most of the glyphs that they recovered were taken from the graves, coffins, they, you know, grave robbers going and breaking into the tombs in Egypt and bringing back the mummies. And most of the mummies had been buried with scrolls, uh, which were instructions for continuing through. And so in uh, explaining Jabal, you're not coming through. You, you, uh, you're breaking up a little bit. I don't know okay. why. Yes, I Okay, well, <laughs> in explaining that uh, uh, meaning for the glyphs, they, um, the ancient Egyptians had uh, called the celestial uh, uh, world, the sphere that the universe is contained in, they had called it Nu, which was a point of the, the, literally the letter N. But they separated it or split it into two parts. What, so you had the upper Nu and the lower Nu. And they were separated by, in, in the case of uh, Earth, they were separated by the Milky Way. So anything above the Milky Way was one new or ocean, and the one under it was likewise. So in the course of a year, the sun and Earth circled through the new. So that this is the reason why you use the double N to explain a year. You say annual, or in Latin, anno, in Japanese, it's nen, n-e-n, in Chinese, it's n-i-e-n, in Korean, it's also n, begins and ends with n. So this double n explains the two different seas that were taken from the Egyptian uh, mythology. So, when I get into this, I want to read from my notes and then I'll come back to these symbols to show how they evolved into five different letters in the English alphabet. When you take the, the two peaks right here, when you take the two peaks and put them together, then it forms the M, so that the upper new or the upper C and the lower C combined form the M, which was called the celestial ocean or Mar or Mer. And this is what uh, the, the, the ancients didn't see the, the celestial ocean as just space. That's what the Europeans see. But we saw it as an ocean containing everything all the galaxies, all life, all inanimate thing, everything comes from these two waters. And combined together, the two ends, the two news, form the letter M. And M was Mar. If you, the celestial sea was called Mar, and then transformed to the Earth, where it was called Mar, the same thing, M, M and R combination. R being added to me to indicate that it was active, it was alive, it was moving. Um, so with that, let me just read from some of my notes because as I age, I find that I can't remember every little detail. So it's better that I uh, put it all together and then <laughs> and then read from it because uh, my mind is starting to slip a little bit. I forget certain terms. Um, first of all, I just want to mention that Christianity teaches us to fear death. And that is the, really the biggest problem 
that uh, one of the biggest problems that we have is because so many of our people embrace or claim uh, Christianity without knowing the origins or the sources of it, the implications of that. Break it up again. Say that again? You were can you hear me? Up. Yeah, we can hear you now oh. when you're close, but when you get far. All right, let me get a little closer then. But um, I, I was mentioning that the big problem, what uh, uh, drives me to do all of this research and continue with it, is to see that all of our people are so much immersed in Christianity. And Christianity, uh, the, the problem with it is uh, it was plagiarized from the uh, ancient African uh, mythology, which refers to all of these things that we're fixing to talk about, the sea and the celestial sea and space and all of that. And it also, Christianity teaches us to fear death, you know, and to fear you know, going to hell, uh, so to speak. And this is, all of this is so far away from what the true African beliefs were at the time. So I, I briefly mentioned the letter M, and I wanted to go back to it because uh, the sound which is Aum or Om, O-M, uh, refers to the whole universe, the circle of the, the universe was called by name Celestia, but when you go to the center of that universe, it was called the Aum. The mind uh, contains thinking in the spiritual world, but the brain contains uh, our thinking in the physical world. And to understand this distinction uh, is vital, is essential to knowledge, to understand that distinction. And it's vital to the affirmation of a circle of existence. In other words, we're talking about transition from life to death and what happens to us and the way our ancient ancestors put it. The brain is the mind in the physical world. When we trance it, our brain is inactive because it's dead. But the mind continues. The mind becomes the brain in the spiritual realm, but it must shed the deformities caused by the physical world events. And it must re, um, rebalance itself or purify itself in order to exit the meskin, which is the grave or the burial site, and assume or receive a soul body. This release from the burial site requires the shedding of the shade or shadow. That's the ghost apparition associated with the grave because it exists between the physical and the spiritual realm called a menta. The ghost can sometimes make itself. Are you there? Yeah, go ahead. The, the, the ghost can sometimes make itself physically apparent, uh, sometimes as a shadow or sometimes as just a gust of air. Indeed, gust being the original word ghost. It sometimes appears or is felt by the still living as a phantom or a phantasma in the mind or in dreams, or is heard as a murmuring, humming, or whispering sound in our ears or in our minds. Those who have grossly polluted their minds with anti-natural doings during their lives on earth such as killing or maiming other life unnecessarily, artificing chemicals or machines that alter natural processes, uh, physically dominating other life forms for the purposes of power, or living above one's uh, needs without regards to the needs of others, et cetera, et cetera, have difficulty exiting the gravesite. They are the ghost apparitions 
who manifest themselves by begging or threatening the still living for help. The attempts to appease them are conducted today, even up to and including today, by various mediums or shaman, monks, obeys, madrinas, priestesses found around the world who have the ability to communicate with the other world through trancing. They offer various sacrifices of food, blood, or other sustenance in exchange for alleviating the threat of haunting. Haunting is a figment of one's own mind that can affect the way we physically react and thereby can be dangerous. Thus, we have ceremonies of uh, meditation, dancing, music, uh, verbally talking or howling or such in order to facilitate communing with these ghosts, many of whom have been incorrigibly evil during their lives. These ghost manis, which what the, the ancient word for uh, a dead person, uh, dead spirit, must be purified before any progress can be made. These purifications... Um, can be numerous depending on the depths of the evil housed by the mind or of the deceased. Yeah, we got to keep in mind that when we say a mentor, we're not talking about traveling to uh, another room or another location somewhere in the universe. A mentor is our own minds. We, we, our brains die, our bodies die, but we transit and our uh, mind continues, our personality, our mind continues. And then that personality is what contains every single event uh, that has occurred during our lives. And so we have to find a way to evict the evil in that it picked up during its life and balance it with the good deeds we've done. So in order to reach a, a point to where uh, you, you're balanced, you're un, unbiased. So these ghost manis must be purified before any progress can be made. And these uh, purifications can be numerous depending on the depths of the evil. The, the personality after you die is called the ka, kra, in some cases the she. They must receive a spiritual body, which is called a sahu, or which is really the, the, the origin for the genesis for the word uh, soul, in order to proceed from the burial place into a mental proper, the afterworld. It is to this ka or kra that the living descendants make uh, appropriations to. They were considered the living of this point. Uh, uh, Gerald Massey said that the, the Ka to which offerings were made was representative of the deceased who lived on in spirit, whether groping in the neither world or walking the earth as a ghost or voyaging the celestial water. In, uh, on his way to the heaven of eternity. So this, these are very ancient um, uh, explanations for the cycle of the, the, or the circle of existence that we go through. A woman gives birth to a child, and that, uh, that term was MS, the mother and the child. We, we see them together. And but the term mess, M E S, doesn't mean birth or it doesn't mean beginning, it actually means the middle. And so, many, many terms referring to the middle have come from this idea that uh, a woman giving birth is not the beginning, so life or our existence doesn't begin 
with life on earth, but rather it, uh, our birth is just a trans, uh, we transfer from the uterus to life, and then we transform from the, the life to the, the grave, and then we transform from the grave into the spiritual realm, and all the time we're seeking to rebalance ourselves so that we'll be able to uh, then pass on into an another life, another, th this is what immortality is, is all about. So emergence in a menta, that is getting out of the grave, <clears throat> was the coming forth of the human soul from the coffin and from the gloom of the grave in some form of personality, such as is depicted in the shade or the ba. This is what Massey said, the ba being synonymous as the soul body. Each stage of the resurrection is measured by and depended on purification or redemption from the evil encumbered by the earth-born personality or a ka. So and Massey continues, in the Egyptian teaching, the sinners, once human, who were irretrievably bad, were put an end to once and for all at the time of the second death in the region of annihilation. Now, in the Christian idea of hell, the evil sinner suffers in burning pain forever. But in the African mythology from which Christianity was plagiarized uh, and altered or misunderstood, there is the prospect of a second death. That is the death of the spirit, the ka, the cross spirit. Of this mass, he says, coming to an end forever was to the Egyptian mind a prospect worse than everlasting pain. So profound was their appreciation of life, so powerful their will to persist. The very idea of an historical, that is a physical Jesus, comes from non-science of physics. White people who don't possess the ability of communing with the spiritual realm needed to create or invent a physical God, an all-powerful super being of extraordinary, nonsensical, fictitious powers who would enshrine life on earth as the ultimate paradise of existence and who condemns to an equally imaginary purgatorial realm of which the center was an everlasting cauldron of fire, those who dared not to accept the idea of God, except for that merciless narrative, they offer no explanation for how to achieve immortality. The idea of physics or of the spiritual blind was imposed on the populations of Europe by way of mortal violence, murdering millions in their quest for physical dominance. And today they still employ the same violent methods of uh, seduction, hence what we call white supremacy. No beast, no place more destructive than the imposition of white inferiority projected in violation of nature against every sense and against every environment. This notion of white supremacy has advanced to the precipice of mass extinction of life on earth. And rather than amalgamate with people of color and alleviate the visible symptoms of inferiority, they seek to replace themselves with mechanical robots that can exist without natural, the natural sustenance in life. People of color who call themselves Christians are nothing more than agents of white supremacy endorsing and enabling their own fatal demise. The second death came to those who had been so evil or ignorant during life that they could not in death find a way to redeem themselves. 
Remember, a meta is one's own mind. And as such, everything done, both good and evil and all in between, is registered there. And in death, while in the confines of the grave, coffin or mesquite, must be reviewed and the evil unraveled, the mind cleansed and purified, so that only the good spirit or ka can obtain a basso with which to exit and continue towards final purification, using truth and knowledge as its guide, erasing life's evil with life's good until it has regained the purity or balance which had allowed it to be born innocent at the onset of life on earth. Immortality is the, the M, the Ma, the Am of equipoise and balance at the very center or circle of existence. The quest for the Am is not a matter of time or distance. Purification comes at the will of the soul or the sahu, the same word. How long or how far is irrelevant. It must jettison all sense of evil and submit to the laws of celestia of nature. It cannot favor or disfavor any part of that law. It must be pure and unbiased in order to receive its ankh or key to immortality. The Am is the same word as the Ovum. They are the same. An Ovum is a hermaphrodite containing both male and female seed. Hence, the same oval shape of the male gonad and the female ovaries. The word sperm, for example, is spelled S, P, R, and M. S represents the C, P represents the male, R means it's mobile or active, and the M means it's purified, perfect, unbiased, as in the M of the word ovum or um. People on earth, generally speaking, picture meant as some physical uh, domain somewhere in, in, in the universe, locate, uh, uh, filled with physical obstacles and barriers, such as cauldrons of fire, lakes of lava, or mountainous vacations, or typhonic wound, uh, winds, or hail, brimstone, all of these things which are mentioned by the Bible. This is how their preachers, priests, and clergy describe the other world or afterlife. But a menta, as its name implies, is the domain of one's own mind. They are the same word. The mind and a menta is the same word, T and D interchange. Glimpses of the mind of which are visibly witnessed when we shut down all the physical senses. It can be accessed during trance or sleep. The visions seen are not physical because of the combined, <clears throat> because the eyes are closed. They are spiritual because of the combined experiences that shapes the personality of the individual and is therefore unique in one's own mind. That may appear, they may appear, excuse me, as monstrous obstacles ominously present and just as effective to spirituality as our physical encounters during physical life. And just like those physical obstacles can produce physical death if not overcome, so too can spiritual obstacles produce spiritual death in the afterlife if the spirit knows not how to navigate them. This is why knowledge was so emphasized by the Eunostics, the ones who know of good and evil. The second death can the pose of the spirit. You're breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up a little. Without? Yeah, how's yeah. that, better? Yeah. If you can. All right, without? All right, let me go back a couple of sentences. Um, uh, 
uh, just like you know during life we uh, in, uh, con are confronted by physical obstacles you know obstacles which can affect the way we react and can lead to death if we don't overcome them and so there are spiritual obstacles in the afterlife if if you know don't know how to navigate them uh, this is why knowledge was so emphasized by the Gnostics, the ones who know. They, they name themselves knowledge. Without knowledge of good and evil, the second death can depose of the spirit into an abyss of dark matter, such as a black hole, which then, after a timeless term, emerges as a speck of matter or a fleck of dust which makes up the inanimate elements of the celestial spheres. And then Massey uh, uh, addressed that. He says, in the hall of the last judgment, the deceased expects justice and equity. His God is a just and righteous judge. He does not pray for mercy or rive in the dust to seek a sentimental forgiveness for sin or sue for clemency. He knows it is the life, the character, the conduct that will count in the scales of the mighty for life hereafter. The word mayad or mighty that Massey uses is the product of a white racially biased Christian so-called Egyptologist who were non-African in the first place in unabashedly racial uh, supremacist in the second place. Their objective when they began was to seek out evidence of biblical sites and events as reported by their Bible as a true history. Instead, their findings revealed the absolute total defilement of truth begun by the Judeo-Christian founders, the so-called church fathers who, in collusion, with the imperial Roman government and its legions of soldiers violently stamped out all vestiges of truth and replaced it with their mutant white supremative narrative as recorded in their Bibles, Old and New Testament. M, Maya, Maya is simply the M, the arm, the arm of truth, the center of the balance of the scales. In other words, equilibrium, UN, total purity. The Egyptologists found that without melanin, they were diametrically deformed in an otherwise world of color. That in their deformity, they had an unnaturally engendered defense me mechanism projecting themselves as superior to all life forms in the world of color. They establish as the ultimate proof of that anti-natural belief, the ability to kill life without sentiment, mercy, nor guilt. And preferring to the um, the, the term, um, their letter M, um, the words that are derived from M or AM um, uh, when combined with vowels, various vowels, I-U-I-O, they mean, generally speaking, the center, the sight, the balance, pure, the sum, um, all, the total, the great deity of God, uh, mater, mother, uh, unbiased or pure suggest the central position. And for example, Am in Hindu means the triple constitution of the cosmos, which are one, the absolute, the relative, and those in be, and that thing in between that connects them to. Here we see that the, the, they spell it A U M, which is in, in uh, amongst the Greeks was the Alpha Omega. The vowel between U, V, A, etc. From these terms, am comes the word ham, which leads to homo, which is literally uh, simply saying the, the letter M, the same way with human and ombre, omen, omni, 
omnis, and on and on and on. All of these terms refer to the, the central uh, part of existence, the om. Yeah, I, I know when I was living in um, West Africa, when I was part of the... Uh, Written up. The, when I was living in West Africa, part of the... Get, get back a little bit, Jim Ball. Okay. Yeah, it's better. All right. When I was living in uh, West Africa, that uh, part of the preparation of a deceased for the funeral ceremony was the opening of the mouth because uh, uh, th this, was, this ceremony uh, was to permit the, the deceased to go from the grave into the uh, the other world to continue in, into immortality. So uh, you you have in life this the sound of humming, which is um. But when you purse the lip, um, 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 the natural sound that comes from it is the M or the um. And this is why you see in the amongst the the Buddhist. And the Hebrew, or in the Hebrew, <laughs> Hindu monks and Persians, all of these places where uh, Europeans penetrated but did not totally take over. The religion, the Hebrew and Buddhist religions, both contained uh, a, a sort of trancing where the monks uh, recite the term. Um, um, they repeat it over and over and over and over again in order to get into a trance state. In order to get into a trance state, you have to literally turn off the, the physical sentence, the set, um, senses and allow, allow your mind to go into that center of existence between the physical and spiritual, and you can commune both ways. So that was basically uh, <laughs> what I read from my notes. And I could continue a little bit more by explaining to you that the M, when you go to the letter N, let me see that. When we go to the letter N, uh, and you put the two Ns together, you 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 form the letter M, which is explains why they named the the universe space, what the Europeans call space, the Mar or the sea. And the same way, when there's two basic sounds that are with that comes with the symbol, the one is the the peak and the other is the valley. The peak uh, uh, referred to the celestial waters. The, the, the new, the two news that make up the mar of outer space or the celestial sphere. But the V, the valleys, part of the stroke for referred to referred to the terrestrial waters, which is here on land. And the two oceans there was the atmosphere and then whatever uh, water uh, Exist that exists on land, the oceans, rivers, lakes, etc. So you had these two uh, different ways of uh, denoting water. When you put the two valleys of this stroke of this uh, symbol, when you put those together, you form a double V, which is where the word water comes from, or in agua which is U-A-G-U-A, -U -A, whereas G refers to the geo or the land. Or, so this is what the origin of these symbols are. U and V are totally interchangeable. That's why when you say, um, uh, when you put two Vs together, you don't say double V, you say double U, because it is U. And all of this, these terms, the N, the M, the U, the V, and W all refer to the same basic thing, water, whether it's the outer space water, the celestial myrrh, or the terrestrial 
of seas and atmosphere and oceans. And again, myrrh is used even now. We say merchant or mermaid, et cetera, et cetera, marine, and to refer to that kind of thing on Earth, uh, on here on Earth. So these are the, some the things that I wanted to mention, you know, because I always saw N as representing water, but I didn't put it into context because I hadn't looked at it long enough. And now that you read in, uh, the narratives from the glyphs, and you, uh, first of all, you have to identify the, the big problem with that. Yes, mostly translated. You break your number, you need all. How's that? Is that better? I don't know whether to get closer or further. <laughs> yeah, it does it different ways. Sometimes when you're close to south, you know, yeah. and sometimes when okay. you're back, you know, but go ahead. Yeah. All right, but um, uh, sometimes um, when when we refer to uh, water, we we need to understand why and where these terms came from. You know, the dictionaries don't connect any. They don't give. First of all, I have mentioned many times, they don't even give any definitions for individual letters that make up their alphabets. And the reasons they don't give it is because they don't want to reconnect with Africa and explain that that's where they're from. That's where all humans come from. And that if that is the case, um, since that is the case, they have to explain, well, what happened to them? How come they lost melanin and et cetera? They don't want to get into that. So they just totally disconnect themselves from Africa. And it's up to us to go back and recover these this knowledge and start teaching our people about African science. Look, uh, I hope if you have a copy of uh, Conspiracy of Silence that you read my chapter on the Great Pyramid. And if not, I hope you'll get a pick up a book by uh, Peter Tompkins called Secrets of the Great Pyramid, where the, the um, the mathematics that went into it are explained. It's incredible. The The Great Pyramid is one of the, not one of, it is the ultimate advance in science, period. And, and it was done without any kind of mechanical device. And that makes it unique and so far advanced that it's beyond people's uh, uh, perception to even explain how they built it because the science had evolved that much. The glyphs that they tried to translate, remember, they were written over a period of 10,000 years from about 10,000 BC all the way up until the, the, the catastrophe of 1500 BC, which started the downfall of Egypt. All of those tombs that they robbed and uh, mummies, um, the, the scrolls that were buried with the mummies um, were, were all based on the uh, transiting amenta, how to get through that, how to face truth and reestablish balance. And all of it was dealing with nature, natural science. The the genius that built the Great Pyramid was based on natural science. There was no physics involved in it. And that's extraordinary when you consider where we are today with this threat of machines taking over, you know, robots and drones and you name it, you know, artificial whatever is all out there. And uh, the earth is being threatened. And yeah, you see the weather changes that are affecting even as I'm speaking, is going on today because nature is making her corrections. And, you know, <laughs> they, they don't favor or disfavor human beings because of their human philosophy. You know, you, you are just a part of nature. And that's all you have to, uh, 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 she's not selective in picking out who survives and who doesn't. So anyway, that's briefly my uh, uh, what I wanted to say. I, I hope it wasn't. I hope it was clear, and I'm open for questions about it. Duval, I have a couple quick questions. 
what yeah what how how would you simplify the relevancy of this i mean most people are not into egyptology or ancient africa uh as far as it's it's relevancy today uh mm. then uh, I, I hear you say it makes you want to do the research right uh, people who don't want to do the research you simplify it by saying it um that that, that Africa is the origin of civilization and the origin right. of human, human. So, but like, you, are you su suggesting that studying the letters of the alphabet will bring you back to Africa? Well, that's, that's part of it. Um, look, you know, 90% or more of our people not only here in the diaspora, but in Africa as well, many of us are uh, caught up in Christianity as a religion. We embrace it, you understand. We get in trouble and we call on the invented uh, Jesus or some other uh, thing, you know? And by doing that, you take ourselves away from the science that permitted us to advance to the point of building something like a great pyramid because none of that existed until 1500 bc when the earth was hit by the uh, the meteorites and caused this um, uh, system whereby warfare appeared suddenly appeared on earth where people were desperate uh where uh, inbreeding uh, happened in the case of europe etc and producing a whole race or a whole group of albinos and all of this thing so it's really fundamentally important that we regain who we are as africans even though it might not seem to have any relevancy oh, you know because nowadays everybody's worried about paying the rent and getting enough food on the table and keeping their house you know all of that kind of stuff but really, the, uh, the, the point remains that no matter what kind of lifestyle, no matter where we live, we all have to make the transition. And it's vital to continue into immortality by knowing the truth and by seeking to replace the lies and uh, the evil that has affected our personalities with truth and uh, and respect for the natural uh, universe, the, the laws of the nature that surrounds us. Without that, as I pointed out in, 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 in from my notes, you, you suffered a second death. So, you know, the eunostics emphasize over and over and over and over again that the main key towards immortality was, uh, was knowing. And if you continue to be ignorant by practicing a fake or false religion, then you really are creating a, a circumstances which co uh, contributes to the demise of Black people and not our recovery. So in order to recover, we've got to get back to our roots and not only uh, physically, uh, psychologically, but we've got to get rid of this um, uh, so-called narrative invented by the deformed people whose purpose was to dominate the world of color. That's us. That's what they've got us as their agents. <laughs> okay, but I'm asking you, could you explain who Gerald Massey is and your research, what you were reading from? What book? Massey was, Massey was, uh, uh, I've, I've, I don't have this. The, the, the readings I gave you were from ancient Egypt, okay. which is, uh, his final book and it was written the year before he passed away in 1907 and he published it in 1906. Mm -hmm. He had spent uh, oh, better than 30 years
Go ahead. No, you said no. the theme of the book was what? Researching his family. No, no, what was the name? Ancient of the Egypt, the light of the world. Okay, I got that one. Because he he also was he was he uh, the Anacalypsis or uh, the book of the beginning? Yeah, he wrote the book of beginnings in uh, 1881, okay. and which uh, uh, it went into somewhat of the origins of the word the the European languages as having been originally from Africa, but he didn't go a far enough into detail about it and his second book was um called the um natural genesis which talked about all the, the customs and practices uh, like halloween celebrations and uh puberty rites etc how they had uh, the ones he, he, he refers to mostly is in Europe, but refers back to Africa again, explaining that Africa was responsible for nearly all of the not only physical and biological origin of the Europeans, but of their culture and their languages. And that they had what he didn't go into was what happened to them, how they became deformed, how they lost melanin and why they disconnect themselves from Africa and why they would develop a, a, a phony religion. It was all about politics, poli you know, establishing dominance over the world of color. All right, the other question is- Professor Brown. Yes. Before you ask the other question, can I, can I make a statement? Yeah. Or, or I, wanna, I wanna contribute to what both of you are saying, well, not both of you, but to what uh, Jerry is talking about. And, you know, throughout these years, I've been I've been under you guys' tutelage. And what's very important that I think people got to recognize is what you say, Professor Ra. Do not let your oppressor be your teacher. If if we're taking any part of their information and applying it to our lives and what their intent for us is and has been that is if we're taking that in we're we're being psychotic so that means that you know from from what i say we have to totally change our mentality from what any anything that they ever have given us we need to get rid of we need to delete it so, so what what uh, Jerry's talking about, what you talk about, Professor Ra, we really need to listen. People need to listen and start doing some rethinking. You know, I, I really don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it. Anybody that that's studying under Christianity and found out that what they were studying was incorrect, I wonder what they would do. And well, it, you know, it's just it's mm -hmm. it's it's it's, uh, it's amazing how we are so out of touch with what we really should be doing. It took but, me years to get to this point. But go ahead, Professor Rock. First of all, I appreciate what you said. I have one question, then I'm gonna follow up with you. Uh, what is the eunostics? When you say knowledge, they name themselves after knowledge. The eunostics. Uh you, yeah, geno they, we say in English, gnostic, but it was eunostic. Eunostics were the ones who know the, the term uh, gnostic is the origin for the European, for the English knowledge. In Greece, it was gnostic. Okay, so that's what they were. They were known as the people who knew, who continued the natural science. Who, who did not accept any uh, historical Jesus because they knew it was fake. You know, it's, uh, it's hard to draw parallels to it today. But if you were to uh, watch this guy, uh, Trump, for example, become re be reelected, then sure they would be uh, You're too January close. the 6th. As a, you, you're breaking up. Making them, Okay. Just push the machine.
Push the your machine over. Go ahead again, Joel. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. But um, uh, I guess the, the, the term eunostic means knowledge. And the emphasis that they always pointed out was to know. And uh, when we think we know, by believing, accepting the European story of for Christianity or Judaism or Islam, then you're really misleading our people. So that you're not, you're equipping them with falsehoods, which are not going to be helpful when we make our transition. And we have to make our transition. No one lives forever. We have to go on. And the 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 uh, criteria for uh, uh, ex uh, receiving immortality was the ability to reach the arm, the center where you're not biased against, in favor or against anything, that you were innocent, that you were clean, that you could balance the all of the evil that was done to you in life. Uh, or, or that formed your personality in, and, and is carried with you after you make your transition, after you become dead, and then you go on, your spirit is still alive. And now in order for it to receive uh, immortality and not be end up as some f fleck of dust or a piece of a, a rock or something like that, then you had to be able to rebalance the personality and to re-assume uh, the center of that existence, which was um, the, the, the middle, the, the, all the reason, all of those terms, middle, medium, uh, uh, are, are all contain the M, which refers to this, the center, the equilibrium, as I say, the, uh, the umbilical, the thing that connects you to your 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 mother doing uterus doing life utero life all of these things were the arm um, and the, the the Buddhist who practice it today and the the, the you froze you froze your ball okay. Uh, that might be his connection. Yeah, yeah. But let me let me just say this about about it, man. The the aspect of Christianity, and you could change the names to different things like Jehovah and uh, well, Jehovah came before Jesus, but uh, uh, our, our Islam. Or Santa Era. It's all about superpower and creation and things. But most religions, organized religions, win the hearts and minds of the people that believe in it. And not only it 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 it, 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 it dominates their hearts and minds, it dominates their spirit. Those are the three dynamic things. So even though you can tell them. And, and 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 give them a different truth. They still going to go with it because there are other aspects that go into their belief. Most people think everything good that happened to them is a blessing, and they thank God for food, like blessings before they eat, uh, uh, praying that God wake them up. And watch over them while they sleep. They got prayer now. They be down to sleep. I pray my soul that God be So it's it's more than that. Uh, simply just showing them truth or giving them information. It, 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 you've done that by example, and sometimes by just referring them to books and tapes and information. It's like the people following Trump. They they don't care what he do. There's always been people deified on earth as God. There's some people love basketball players, call them fanatics. You understand? Know
You can call these people religious fanatics, but they, you know, they exist. And what you have to do is focus on teaching the new people the information Jabal is talking about, making it a part of their life and their understanding of the world and the universe and how it benefits them knowing this. The people that believe in Christianity think they're going to heaven as is, not as a spirit, but they're going to see their parents, not in a different form or, or reincarnation of, into another planet or something, but they're going to actually see their grandparents and great-grandparents and Ron the Booth with Jesus on the right side of Jesus. It's hard to break that up, man. They get their money. They get their houses. It's, it's deep. And that's, that's the, like Hindus and Buddhists, man. They, they don't want nothing. They don't want nothing. They think possession of material things is, is bad. You understand? No one other one said you're supposed to give all your wealth away. All that. So the only thing I'm saying is that the education and what, what, what Christianity do, Islam and uh, uh, Judaism do, is they, they block out all the knowledge. And that's what Jubal is talking about. They don't want you to know the, 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 uh, the, the origin of spirituality and consciousness. Um, Brother Hembrick, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you have any comment? Well, you know, basically what it amounts to is belief versus knowledge. You believe instead of seeking the knowledge. But, uh, as it was before, it was okay, there we go. Uh, uh, as we, you know, you know, deal with the mentor and all of that, uh, and uh, you know, it it just had. But what people need to realize, all people of color, is all of those major religions is what enslaved you in the yeah. first. But people only want to start on the shores of America. They don't want to go back across the water too much at all. And, and and basically what we're doing is committing cultural genocide on ourselves by studying another person's stuff. But anyway, I have a question for Jabral if he's still on. He's, he's going to come back on there charging the, the computer because it's... Uh, even, even the Bible tells you you know, to study to show thyself approved, but it's what they got you studying. That's the trick. You ain't studying your own. You're studying, you know, what the enslaver gave you. So, uh, 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 you, this knowledge that we ought to be seeking is I'm what's going to get you to the other side, like Brother DePaul was talking about. Yeah, um, you know, but okay. it's. Well, you got to let me back on. He said you got to put him back on. You haven't? Oh, there he is. All right. Is he on? Yeah. Oh, I, he, I, he, I, he's coming on. He's it's not connecting. Here. It's connecting. The audio is connecting. And my question is, uh, <laughs> okay, we back. All right, he's ready for you. Uh, Embrick has a. I got a question. You were originally talking about the water and all of you know life, but not. Uh, and you talk about burial. My question is, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go through this burial stuff. I want to, I want to be aquamated instead of cremation. <laughs> aqu water. So my question to you is, how does that play into this afterlife thing? from not being want to be buried in a hole to aquamation, which is what I prefer. It it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> I mean, some people drown, they never find the body. That doesn't mean a thing. Or some people are cremated. Uh, some people die out in the middle of a desert and they never find the body. It, the transition is the release of the personality from the physical body. 
that is the transition. Then once that personality is released, you have to find a way to balance the, the, your personality, to bring your personality back to where it was when you were born into life as an innocent, unbiased, not favoring any part. The, your personality has been misshapen during life. All of the, the events that you, you encounter, people you meet, uh, uh, good and bad uh, events that happen to you all during your life have to be uh, not discarded, but they've formed your personality. They've, they've affected your personality. So the the test is, can you now, since your body is gone, can you now rebalance your mind, your personality, your, your, your amenta, back to the om, the center, the, the, the M was the center, the meeting place between of the universe. So you have to get back to that unbalanced uh, 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 theme. In, in fact, um, uh, this is borne out when you look at a, a picture of, uh, from the hieroglyphs of the scales. We, we you know, most of us, uh, not most of us, some of us know about the the so-called hall of truth and judgment, which the deceased spirit enters after death, whereby the, the what they call the heart, but the personality actually is put on one side of the scale and on the other side is a feather of truth. And the, uh, the truth was called Ma or M. And this is, I don't know if you can see that, this symbol was pronounced um or m so this is what you want to do is you have to take all of the good that occurred during your life and hopefully it'll balance against the evil so that you erase all of the deformities to your personality and you're able to be that innocent unbiased personality again and thereby, at the end of the weighing scene, which the uh, Africans in Egypt depicted, the, 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 uh, you handed the Ankh, which was the key to immortality. And it depended on whether or not your personality could weigh itself against the feather of truth. I, got, I hope that explained <laughs> it. I got a question, a comment, and another question. Uh, what I've been doing since I've studied that what you just talked about here in the last few months uh, i've been mm -hmm. going body i think i've ever wronged to try to rectify if i had done something to them you know to seek their forgiveness also uh i guess that you, you know christianity says you can send a uh, uh, seven times 70 a day and be forgiven. I, I guess the mafia loved that as many people they were killing. But my last <laughs> question and comment is on is, is on the Gnostic along with nature, the natural roots. Uh, how mm -hmm. how do they play into each other? Because I, I'm I, I'm of that, and I'm of the nature, and I want to know the connection between those two. All right, what? What Christianity talks about, and the you know Catholics for a long time ran the scam on how if you come to Rome and uh, give money to the church that you can be forgiven for uh, all your sins. <laughs> you know, they they sold them as indulgences. They called them, and it was just a, a scam to make money. And this, uh, just remember. Once you pass, everything you did in life is already recorded in your mind, which is a menta, literally a menta. That is the same word. And Massey, um, um, it, let me repeat what he said. He said, in the hall of the last judgment, the deceased expects justice and equity. His God is a just and righteous judge. He does not pray for mercy or writhe in the dust to seek a sentimental forgiveness for sins or sue for clemency. He knows it is the life, the character, the conduct, 
that will count in the scales of maiti for life hereafter. So basically, uh, Christianity might tell you to pray and ask God for for forgiveness for sins that you you you're seeking redemption even before you die, but that it doesn't work that way. And your personality is what it is. And once your body is gone, that's what you have to rely on. And the brain of the personality is the mind. And the mind is what contains every deed, good and bad, every experience, good and bad. And you, uh, as a personality, have to be able to uh, uh, produce the the good that are um, that will overcome any evils that are there now you know you have to get back to equilibrium to the balance again to the innocence that's required for immortality so you know that's that's the situation that's why you know we we the egyptians called the burial place the meskhen m e s k h e n and in the 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 Hebrews, when they copied it, or Christians, when they copied it afterwards and then plagiarized it, talk about the mask seal, M-A-S-C-I-L. You can look up the term. And in some of the Psalms, I think about 14 of those Psalms, the, the deceased in the mask seal, which is the grave site or the burial site, is begging for redemption, for forgiveness, looking for balance again. And this kind of uh, uh, apparitional thing is what uh, we, we still experience, or many of us, during the modern days, whereby when we trans, we're able to communicate with the, the spirits who are trapped, and many of them are begging for uh, help from the still living. So that's why when the, uh, we see some of the ceremonies, I see them down in Kubo and I'm down there, they, you know, cut a chicken or a rabbit or some animal to, to give blood because blood is the sustenance of life on earth. And this is in trying to uh, uh, contribute these things, these sacrifices to the people who are trapped in the mess can or the mass kill, who are unable to find the, the, the need, the, the balance that is necessary for them to go on. I hope that explains some of it. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't seeking redemption through Jesus. I was going to the individual that I thought I may have wronged, but I ain't looking for nothing from Jesus. I want to get it from the individual. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Well, of course, that that's always helpful because you you remember you're dealing with your own personality. So the the things that um, uh, have occurred in your life that you feel un discomfort about maybe can be corrected uh, while you're here. You all of it is dealing with your personality. You are going to die. Everybody's going to. Every living thing is going to make this transition. So really, it's a matter of what condition your personality is at the time. Whether or not you're able to have uh, found a way to redeem yourself to where it hasn't deformed your personality to the point to where it can't be recovered, you know, because of the... Uh, many, many evil deeds that you might have encumbered during your life. So, uh, you know, what I'm trying to explain and trying to put in today's terms of what our ancestors believe. Now, I have great faith in what they knew because uh, as a sample was the building of the Great Pyramid. I can't emphasize it enough that when you understand what went into that and that they had no mechanical devices, they didn't practice physics at all. They only understood nature. They didn't pollute it. They didn't uh, do, do anything to divert it. They didn't build dams and all of these the implements that 
they, they have come in, in and try to dominate other people in their life. You're, you're breaking up again, Duval. You're breaking up again. Yeah. But go ahead. Yeah, it, but they didn't try to live above their, 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 their position in the world. They took care of their families. They, you know, all of those things or what forms the personality that the person is. And no one knows better than that person themselves. So if you feel like you've wronged someone and then you've sought redemption with that person, fine, that's got to affect your personality. It does affect your personality. And of course, that's important. Appreciate it. Now, can you speak to the nature and the Gnostic? Let's say that again. Nature, nature and not to. I, I didn't understand the question. I'm sorry. Nature. Na na nature. That's what I heard. As far as, far as with the people of the yeah. Gnostics and nature. The nature and the people of Gnostic. Are they the same? Or what is it? Oh, <laughs> no. Nature is just the laws of the universe, basically, you know, and I'm saying that the the sacred, if you want to call it that, uh, position in the universe was the center of the circle, whereby the person at the center who does not favor either side is perfect. So therefore, they are the ones that will continue into immortality. It will take on another life form somewhere in, in the immensity of the universe, so immense, somewhere in the immensity of the universe because they've uh, 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 dis uh, displayed that they are balanced, that they've reached the middle, the center. They're, they're not already, they're not, um, how do you say that? Uh, they're not already pre-formed into anything. They're open to whatever nature gives them, or whatever comes with being reborn into some other lifestyle, some other life being, some other life location. You know, this is what our ancestors believed in wholeheartedly. So as long as you follow the rules of nature, then... You, there's how could you uh, how could you not be doing the correct thing whereas uh, it, say you murder somebody out of anger you know or whatever or you steal from somebody or you hurt somebody or torture somebody all of those things are not natural and this is what i'm saying about the the ability to live within the laws of nature on this earth i tried to make the the point in the um, uh, in my earlier works where you you don't see in the animal world this kind of uh, 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 malice that you find amongst human beings and especially since the emergence of the europeans you know, they kill. Look, look at man. Look at what they're doing today in Palestine. Yeah, they've stolen these people's lands and now they're murdering. They don't even consider them as human beings. They consider them as animals. They lower than themselves like cockroaches or ants or, you know, flies. And they're really, that's the mentality that comes with this uh, anti-natural uh, misunderstanding about life and death. We all have to die and we all have to face ourselves in death. There's no getting away from that. And so what you do in life is there in your mind. And your mind is a menta, the same word. Mm. Uh, Machinda, you have any questions? Did it get through? Yeah. I think you got it. Machinda, are you still there?
Yeah. Yeah. I'm still here. I don't know. I don't have any questions, you know, um, just, uh, listening and learning and, uh, having some things reiterated what I've already come to know and I appreciate, you know, the conversation tonight, but I don't have any questions. Uh, so I'll leave it on, leave the floor. Well, I'm sorry. We're going to, uh, you know, uh, I'll close it out with, uh, Rashi P telling us, uh, what's going to be on tomorrow. Go ahead, Rashi P. So we, we got brother Kwabana coming on and, uh, He's going to talk about that new series, a uh, good time series on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, if you watch, I was sent the trailer by him. And if you watch that trailer, it is something to see in here. Mm -hmm. And it should be very interesting tomorrow. Okay. Do while you have the closing statement? Uh, well, no, I just want to make the point that I hope people uh, understand from the, the symbol of the, the, for water that the, the peak, the, the symbol like this was referring to the water in the sky, the celestial in, the, in space. And the V this, the, that forms the N and then you have the peak. And then the V. The V refers to the terrestrial water. And then both of them had two two parts to them. One was the upper new and the lower new in space. And the atmosphere and the terrestrial water or the oceans here on Earth. And this led to the, like I said, the five letters that you're breaking up your ball. I I'm hearing noise, but the, refer to those five letters: the N, the M, the when it's inverted, it becomes a U or a V, or and when you put those two V's together, you get the W, which is why we say water, and that's where it comes from. So I just wanted to make that the point. And that the center of all of this, uh, of our existence, was to be able to, to, uh, to reach the equilibrium, which was called the Amada Om. And that's what we're going to do. points out. So I hope people understood that. Repeat the last statement. The, um, the, the center of of all of this was called the M. That's why you say mat or you say mater or mother. All of these terms means the uh, the ovum, the um, uh, the um of an umbilical. Everything was uh, dependent on that central sound, the M. And the reason that the the, the mouth is open and closed even after the deceased was to, was to uh, help the deceased towards immortality by opening and, and then closing the mouth, whereas the um, um, uh, you get that M sound that naturally comes when you purse your lips. So these are the things that, you know, will offer an origin for those particular letters and also for the idea of immortality and how we can obtain it. And hopefully we're not distracted anymore, any longer. People who hear this should really understand that you're wasting your time trying to uh, uh, believe in this Christian God, which, was, which is false. The whole thing is false. Uh, I don't know if I have time. I just want to mention one other thing, if I may. It was just unrelated, sort of. And that is the, uh, the calendar whereby the Webster says that the, the uh, March, which used to be the first month of the year because the year began on the first day of spring, which occurs in March. And uh, Webster said March is named after the planet Mars, which is completely false. And uh, the, the, actually the, 
first five months of the year were named after the, the five planets that you could see with the naked eye without telescopes. So those were Mercury, Venus, Earth is third, but of course we're on Earth, so we don't count that. And then Mars was the fourth. The fifth was, um, or excuse me, the, the third rather than the fourth was Jupiter, and the fifth was Saturn. And all of these, the, the first planet month, of which would open the, used to open the year before they changed the calendar, was based on the planet Mercury, which unfortunately, I know we're running short on time, but I just wanted to make, make the point that Mercury or March was named after the planet Mercury and not after the planet Mars as Webster alleges. And the year, uh, the, the sun on the first day of spring doesn't rise in Aries as they all also allege, but it rises. Uh, uh, Aries is now the overhead uh, constellation, so sun doesn't rise into the Aries. It, it rises in the Aquarius now. But these things are, just demonstrate how by disconnecting Europe from Africa that you can, you know, corrupt the, the text, anything. You can say anything about anything. And if you don't know the origins of the, uh, the thing you're talking about, who's to challenge you? You see? So this is, uh, this is where we're at. My, my work is to simply re make that bridge again. I'm just one person. I'm hoping that listeners, their children, grandchildren, great-grands, all will find a way to reestablish that African origin for science in the world and understand that these people who, the Europeans who need to dominate physically uh, violently, all the other people in the world is because they lack color. And the, the way they can overcome it, amalgamate, mix in. <laughs> That's how you regain melanin. Yeah. Got Everybody it? passed laws against you. <laughs> you froze. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I, uh, so I give okay. you a call. Okay, I'm but, sorry about uh, the hitch with the computer again. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. You did a great job. I want to thank everybody and hope you come and this is the Kwamanon tomorrow about uh, good times and the deformation of our character and images of people through comedy and through uh, and through the mis through and, and how it's been a historical thing. All right, Asad. All right, Duval, I'll give you a call. Peace. Thanks again, man. Peace. It was beautiful. No, no. Thanks for having me. All right. Each one, each right. one. Conscious corner. Uh, you already got a picture.